Jeremiah chapter 29. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captive unto the priests, to the prophets, to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now what, what Jeremiah does now, there are people in Babylon. There's still people in Jerusalem. Jeremiah writes a letter, sends it forth to Babylon with instructions by God. A little side note. After that, Jeconiah, the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, there's Daniel, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters, the smiths, so they can't rebuild, they can't do nothing, were departed out of Jerusalem. Again, I say, you know, people are, oh, they're going to take our guns away. Be careful when they start taking away your building. So as a nation, you can't rebuild. And your weapons. And by the hand of Elisha, Elisha, the son of Shaphan, and uh, Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah. These are the ones who carried a letter for Jeremiah. Whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying. Alright, so, so Zedekiah sends men to Babylon. Jeremiah's like, wait a minute, I got a letter from the Lord. You want to send this off for me? Thus saith the Lord of hosts. This begins the letter. The God of Israel. To all that are carried away captives. To be in Babylon. Whom I, God, have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. God said, I allowed it. Buy houses. In Babylon. And dwell in them. Plant gardens in Babylon. And eat the fruit of them. You're going to be there for a while. That's a lot more than two years. Take ye wives. Now, when we come to Nehemiah and Ezra, we got a problem. They took wives. Not of the children of Judah. Not the children of, of, of their tribe. Not the children of Jacob. They had married outlandish women. A whole bunch of them, there was a whole bunch of children, begat sons and daughters. By Ezra and Nehemiah, they got a whole bunch of half breed Jewish children. And they couldn't even speak the language. When God says, take wives and begat sons and daughters, the law prescribed for them to marry in their tribes. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. In the tribe of Israel, in the tribe of your family, that they may bear sons and daughters, Jewish, that ye may in, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. I mean, God's not wiping them out. Verse seven, you find something even in the New Testament. Seek the peace of the city which I've caused you to be carried away captive. God caused it. Pray unto the Lord for it. You mean Nebuchadnezzar is so mean and nasty? He's carried people to Babylon. He's killed people in, in Jerusalem. He's killed people in Judah. And God says, pray for him. Nero is killing Christians left and right, enjoying it. And God has Peter and Paul say, pray for the leaders. At one no point in time, not one point, not no point in time, does God say, revolt against Babylon, a vote against the name. Give in. One man tried to revolt, and God said, okay, I'll turn that wood into iron. And I said, I don't know if it's going to happen. I, I'm not trying to be a prophet. But if God were to tell America, all right, give it up. You're done. I'm bringing in another nation. You're not to revolt. And, well, you know, we won't. Christians revolt against a Democrat president. 
Christians get all filled in the diapers because their Donald Trump didn't get elected. All oh, the votes were stolen. No, God put the man he want in office. He put Donald Trump in for four years. He's going to put uh, President Biden in for how many years? Not your voting. You know what God told you about your voting this year, this election with Biden and, and Trump? Your vote does not count. I took over the election. Oh, you know what their answer is? Not that God's in some charge, not that God's supreme, not that Jesus Christ is the Almighty. Oh, they stole our votes. Yep, and COVID 19 is up China, and the world's going to save you, and Pfizer's is going to save you, and Donald Trump is going to save you, and your church is going to save you. Everybody's going to save you but God the Father and the Son and the Word of God. Because you got because you got nation, your guns, then the Bible. God tells Jeremiah, write it down as Paul wrote it down and as Peter wrote it down. Pray for the peace and pray for the people of the government you are now under. And yes, the government that killed your family, the government that that, that has taken your nation captive, the government is going to destroy. Judah, going to destroy Jerusalem, and going to destroy the temple. You pray for them. You find that in the Old Testament too. But, you know, a lot of the seeing Christians, they can't get it right. For in the, pe in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. You know, if you give in to the government, you give in to God, and you, you pray for it, God says you'll have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to their dreams which they cause you to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely, in, they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Yeah, well, guess what? <laughs> All right, now they're in Babylon. They've been carried captive. Well, guess who's among them? The false prophets. God says, I sent you to Babylon. I had you carry away to Babylon. I tell you to pray for the government, pray for the peace. And guess what? There's false prophets there. I didn't send them. But there they are. Well, if God didn't send them, who did? Well, Jesus gave us a parable. A man went out and sold wheat in the field, and night came along, and somebody set, uh, sold tares among the wheat. Lord, what's the meaning of this parable? The one that sold the tares is the enemy. Right along with God's people, Satan sent his own people. And I told you last night, and I've been telling you for 29 chapters, just because that man's in a pulpit, just because that man is in a podium, just because that man's a preacher, just because that man's a pastor, because that man is a pastor, does not make him right. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, there are ministers out there, and they're of Satan. God did not eliminate them. God says they're there. And you got to rightly divide. Look what he said. Uh, verse 8. For thus saith the Lord, the host of God of Israel, let not your prophets or your diviners that be in the midst of you, they're right there, deceive you. Don't you be deceived by them. Many Christians have been deceived. Neither hearken to your dreams, which cause to be dreamed. It ain't what you dream, it ain't your thoughts, it ain't about you. Too many men in the ministry put themselves in the ministry. Oh, God's called me here, or I think, you know, my man intention of being this minute, blah, 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 blah. 
and God's up in heaven. I didn't say no. I didn't. Matter of fact, God may be up in heaven saying, that's not the ministry I called him to. He's in a total, total, total different office than I want him to be. And listen, you can be called to preach, but if you are in the wrong church office, you're wrong. For many years, I thought God called me to, to be a pastor of a church. Uh, I've never been one. God's called me to preach. God's called me to cheat. Uh, to teach. I'm not a pastor. It'd be wrong for me to put me my, myself put myself in the office that God doesn't want. Now maybe later on God is the, uh, you're faithful to do, but that's not my office. My office right now is to preach and teach. I am not a pastor. I'm a preacher and teacher. There have been a couple people raising, you know, if you, you were a pastor. No, not a pastor. Preacher and teacher. There are pastors out there who don't are not called into that office. There are preachers and teachers out there who have not called to do what they're doing. Now, we're all called to preach the gospel. But we're not all called to get up behind a podium behind a foot and deliver crap to the sheep. And feed them with poison. That prophesied falsely in unto you in my name. They're lying. I have not sent them, say, but they're there. God's not going to stop them. God ain't going to stop the falseness until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent. Even then, it's a call to a question because he said, if anybody said that seeks the Lord on that. In the millennium, they're, they're to stone them. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, not two years, will I visit you and perform my good word, word, not what, the, not what you know, the two years, toward you. What's the good word that God has toward them? I'm coming to get you. I'll bring you back. In causing you to return to this place, there's the good word. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you an expected end. You're not, you're not finished with, you're not done, you're not complete. Though some relig religions will teach that. You're just being spanked. You're being chastised. Then shall you call upon me. You shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart. Daniel begins that. I will be found of you, saith the Lord. I will turn away your captivity, Babylon, and will gather you from all the nations. That's also the second advent. Because Israel is still gone. Judah. From all the places where I've driven you, saith the Lord. And right now it's all over the world. I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Now, go over to Second Chronicles, chapter 36. Second Chronicles 36. Well, let's start in verse 1. Then the people of the land took Jehoiahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months in Jerusalem. The king of Egypt put him down in, at Jerusalem and condemned the land in a hundred talents of silver and a town of gold. And the king of Egypt made Jehoiakim 
the brother, his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem, and turned his name to Jehoiakim. Necho took Jehoaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. This is the, we're, we're going to the times. They've been carried to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And him came Nebuchadnezzar the first time of Babylon and bound him fetters and carried him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Belshazzar is going to take them out. Now this is where we, yesterday, we're, oh, they're going to come back in two years. No. Now not all the stuff of the temple has been taken. Some of it. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and that which was found in him. You know, they are written in the book of the king of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his stead. And Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Come in time to, God said that we're done. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar, number two, twice, and brought him to Babylon. And the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord, second time he's bringing stuff. And Zedekiah, his brother, king over Judah and, and Jerusalem. So, we just read about verse 9, Jehoiakim. We've got Zedekiah coming to the throne. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign. He reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord of his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah, the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Remember, Jeremiah's preaching in the courts, he's preaching in the gates, he's preaching to the king, to the priests. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar a third time, who made him swear by God. But he stiffed his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. All right, there was a pact made between Zedekiah and Nebuchadnezzar, and Zedekiah turned his back. Okay? More are all the chief of the priests and the people, there's Jeremiah's audience, transgressed very much after the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord. That's why Jeremiah is preaching in the house which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. This is the people, this is the atmosphere that Jeremiah is preaching against. Remember, there are gods and there are altars in every street, in every city and in the house of the Lord. So when, when the Baptists say, oh, welcome to the house of the Lord, yeah, you got all the corruptions in it. And the Lord God the Father sent from them by his messengers. Those are the prophets. Rising up in time and sending. Because he had compassion on the people and on his dwelling place. God sent prophet after prophet after prophet. But they mocked the messengers of God. They despise his words. They misuse his prophets. Not just Jeremiah. Until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, there was no remedy. That's where we're on Jeremiah. Therefore he brought upon the king of Chaldees who slew the young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. And they had no compassion on the young men or the maiden or the old men or him of stupid for age. He bowed over. He's bent over. You know, there's a woman, I believe in the book of the Gospel of Luke, that she was bent over, and Jesus healed her. And the Pharisees and Sadducees got all upset with him. He gave them over unto his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of we're getting to this point, and the treasures of the king and all his princes, all these went to Babylon. This is the third final time of Nebuchadnezzar. And burnt the house of God 
and break down the wall of Jerusalem, which will become as it is, and burnt all the palaces with, uh, thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And then that they had carried, and them that had escaped with the sword, and God says, and sword, pestilence, and famine, carried he away to Babylon. How did they escape the sword? According to Jeremiah. All right, we surrender. Take us. How did they die the sword? Oh, we're going to put up a fight. You know what? You know what the church allowed the scenes in America? They're not reading, studying their Bible. That if this happens again, many Christians in America, many Americans are going to die. Because they're going to stick to their guns and they're going to fight and they're going to rebel against the word of God. You remember when the, when the children of Israel sent the spies out and God got angry? And they rose up and said, we're here, Lord, we're going to fight. Yeah, God said, hey, Moses, we tell them I'm not with them. And they went up and fought and they got their butts kicked. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if this happens with America... Many, many, many de deceived Americans and many, many deceived Christians are going to die needlessly. He said, you mean if somebody came in here, you would let them take over America? and, and, and deep Maybe that's where God wants me to go. I'm not afraid to put... I'm not going to put my roots in one nation and one one and pledge allegiance to the flag where God said, "All right, I want you to pick everything up and I want you to move." Okay, where do you want me to move to, Lord? There have been many Christians who have put their roots down in America, and God's like, "I wanted you to go be a missionary." Can't do that. America's my home. America's not your home. This world is not my home. I'm just American. I'm proud to be American. I'll pledge to the piece of cloth. And I won't listen to God. And he'll be very angry with me. Call me anti-American all you want. I preach to Americans about Jesus Christ. Verse 20, where they were servants to him, Babylon, and his sons unto the reign of the king of Persia. You see that? They were servants to Nebuchadnezzar. They were servants to Belshazzar. Then Cyrus came. And God blessed the nation with Cyrus. I wonder how many people complained when King Cyrus came into office. And Cyrus would put the decree, go back to Jerusalem and build. What if, I'm, I'm, listen, I've sent President Biden a letter about salvation, but what if, what if, oh, we don't want Biden, I don't want Biden, I want Trump. What if President Biden, I'm not saying, but listen, what if President Biden is now the route, the road, the highway that the next leader will be the leader of this nation, the anti, I'm not saying Biden, I'm saying what if he's the highway to the Antichrist? And that if you were to got president, okay, four more years before the Antichrist comes. And the fact is, four more years before the Antichrist comes. That means you just put the rapture off for four more years. The fact is that when Jesus needed to be born in Jerusalem, not Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, where Jesus had to be born the city of David, God raised taxation. What if Joseph rebuked? rebuked and revolted against the taxation. You know, this whole country left England over, you know, you've heard the story, uh, uh, the Boston Tea Party because the taxation. What if that was all rebellion against God? You know what the Bible says about taxes? Peter. Yes, Lord. What was that little conversation you were having? And it was about taxes, Lord. Well, so we don't offend them. Go get a fish and open that fish's mouth. And in that fish is the coin. 
Go pay your taxes. I'll keep reading. Now, verse 21. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah. I wonder who that guy is. Until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath, which it hasn't. They violated the, the weekly Sabbath. They violated the feast Sabbath. And they violated the seven-year Sabbath. Now watch. For as long as she lays desolate, they're in Babylon. She kept the Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. If you were to add up those Sabbaths that had been missed, you add, God says, you owe me 70 years of Sabbath that you did not honor. You got so filled with sin. Go to Babylon. Let the land rest. And when the land is done resting. Then I'll call you back. Now. Let me see here real quick. Let me find it. Uh, let me find it real quick. Nehemiah Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 30. And it's funny how these two verses, I just realized how these two verses are together. And we just read about it. Nehemiah 10, 30. And that we would not give our daughters and the people of the land, non-Jews, nor take their daughters for our son. Now Jeremiah says, hey, get married, send your sons off to get daughters and send your daughters off to get your son. Jewish. Look at verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wares or victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. That we would leave the Sabbath year. Oh, Nehemiah got it. I ain't going to do that no more. Come on, everybody. You know why we've been here for 70 years? Don't you do it. on the, You better take the Sabbath off. It taught Nehemiah a lesson. And they were selling. Let's see. Wait a minute. Hold on, please. Chapter 13, Nehemiah, verse 15. Nehemiah 13, 15. This frightened Nehemiah. In those days I saw Judah, some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in cheese, and laid in that. Boy, if, if Jesus and disciples did that, Look at verse 17. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said, What evil thing is this that you do and profane the Sabbath day? Watch 18. Did not your fathers thus, did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? I mean, they're in Jerusalem now. And yet bring more wrath upon Israel profane in the Sabbath? We just got back from 70 years of Babylon. Babylon. 
And it came to pass when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gate should be shut, charged them they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants sat in the gates that there should be no burden brought in on the Sabbath. So the merchants and sellers of all kinds of the ware lodge without Jerusalem once or twice. And I testified against them, saying to them, Why lodge you about the wall? If you do it again, I will lay hands on you. From that time forth, they came no more on the... Why is Nehemiah so upset about the Sabbath? That's 70 years we just finished. And then look what's next. Look what's next. Go down to verse 23. In those days I saw the Jews had married wives of Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. And their children spake half the speech of Ashdod and could not speak the Jews' language. You know, Nehemiah is petrified. If we don't get things right, we're going to go right back to where we were. 